All right, so uh, second example here, and then I'm gonna set you loose on the exercise. Um, this is a rational function like the kind we were looking at yesterday, much simpler than the harder example we did. So can we work out what this thing looks like? Now in this case, um, again, you've got these options, right? You can have a think about uh, doing this by making uh, the right-hand side equal to zero. So the way I would do that is I would say two over x minus three take away one is greater than zero. I'd look at that. And then I'd say, hmm, this thing on the left-hand side, uh, what does it actually look like? Well, I could try and combine these two things into one. I could try and say uh, it's going to be a two on x minus three take away uh, x minus three on x minus three. It's greater than or equal to zero. You could do some algebra here and you could continue simplifying, okay? However, what I'm gonna try and do is show you, just like I did before, you can attack this either way. Um, I'm just gonna try and draw this guy over here, and then I'm gonna look for where it's greater than one, just to illustrate that you need to have some flexibility in the approaches that you use. So let's think about this for a second. Um, just like yesterday, I'm gonna look for some intercepts, and then I'm gonna look for some asymptotes. So, for starters, if I've got y equals two over x minus three, let's look for an x-intercept first. So uh, what I do is I say y equals zero. Hmm, two over x minus three. When is that equal to zero? Have a look at it closely. Is there a value that makes that happen? And it looks to me like the answer is, no, there's no value of x you could put in there that would make this thing zero. So what that means is um, there's no x-intercept. That's what I was searching for, but I can't find one. So I, so I say there's no x-intercept. But I'll look for a y-intercept, and the way I do that is by letting x equal zero. And this is much better. I get y equals two over negative three, so negative two-thirds, okay? So I'll find that, that away in my mind. And then I think about asymptotes, as I mentioned. Uh, a vertical asymptote appears because I look for when the denominator equals zero. It's not supposed to equal zero, so if I let it equal zero, I'll get a vertical asymptote. X minus three is the denominator, uh, equals zero, so I get X equals, whoops, that's a positive three there, so that's gonna be my vertical asymptote. Um, and I'll let you go ahead and do your own working to show that the horizontal asymptote will be Y equals zero. As you put very large values of X, um, you're gonna approach the X axis on both sides of the Cartesian plane. All right, so now let's roughly graph this thing. Uh, let's go ahead and put on my intercept. I think I said it was minus two thirds, so I'm just gonna call that minus two thirds. Uh, that was my y-intercept. There isn't an x-intercept. And then I'm gonna do my asymptotes. I've got one at x equals three, which shouldn't surprise us. This is this horizontal translation that we've seen before. So x equals three. And then I've got a horizontal asymptote of y equals zero. So I'll go ahead and I'll label it like so, okay? What's it going to look like? Well, you can see over here on the, uh, on the left-hand side over here, I've got to get towards this asymptote. I'm fenced in by this other vertical asymptote. And I've got this intercept right there in the middle. So the only way that I can thread all those needles together is to draw this line like so. And then you're gonna get a similar one on the right-hand side but opposite. Okay, so this is roughly what that hyperbola looks like. So now I wanna say, well, when is this thing, going back to the original question up here, when is, excuse me, when is this graph over here, when is it above or greater than one, right? Well, where is that? Where is y equals one? I'm gonna try and put a decent scale on here. So one would be around here. Here is y equals one. So which is the part of the graph that's relevant to my solution? When is the hyperbola above this orange line? Um, and you can see it right there, I'm gonna highlight it for you. Here it is. This is the section that I'm after. So what I need is um, the x values that's kind of fence me in and give me the right domain for that, okay? Now you already have one of the x values, x equals three. You can see I, I can't go anywhere past that to the left. Um, as soon as you go past that, you get this part of the graph down here, which, which I don't want, okay? So that's, that's no good. So I know that I'm gonna be to the right of three, but then I also need to be the left of this particular value here, where that those two graphs intersect. I need to find what that x value is. So the way I'll do that is I will solve uh, for the equation, right? I'll say when, does 
2 on x minus 3, when does it actually collide and intersect with that orange graph 1? Now please keep in mind this equation over here is not the solution to my question, it's one piece of the solution, it's the intersection point. So let's go ahead and solve it. I get 2 on the left hand side when I multiply through by x minus 3, and then all I need to do is add 3 to both sides, which gives me 5. So you can see there, uh, I'm going to fill that in now, get rid of that question mark. That's 5 there, which um, makes sense, it's a little bit to the right of 3. So now I'm ready to write my solution. I want to be between 3 and 5, between 3 and 5. I look just quickly back at my original question, and I notice that the uh, boundary is included. You see that? Um, it's greater than or equal to 1. Now what that would suggest is that therefore uh, my solution is between 3 and 5 and what you would think is that you would have the uh, less than or equal to signs between everything, right? From 3 you start there and then you go to 5. However, you can see I'm sort of hesitating, I don't actually have the uh, equality here on the left hand part of it. This is sneaky, it's why I did this worked example with you. Um, I wonder if anyone can tell me, why is it that I don't actually include this boundary? I do include it here, you can go up to 5 and onto 5 and that's fine, but you can't do it over here on the left, there's a clue in the graph. And I think some of you are picking it up, right? The graph is the key, this is why we're, I'm, we're trying to show you that solving inequalities with graphs is important. The, ga the graph is the key instrument to know, right? Um, I think Tashi's sort of snuck in and everyone's kind of like, yep, what, what they said, right? Um, because there's an asymptote there, remember vertical asymptotes from yesterday, they come from discontinuities in the domain, yeah? So they come from places where the domain, sorry, where the function is not allowed to go. You can't go on to x equals 3, the function just blows up, right? So as a consequence, um, you can't include the boundary in your answer. You can get as close as you like to it, but you can't actually get on to 3 itself. So therefore, down here in my solution, instead of lesser than or equal to, I'm just going to write lesser than. And I know that's a bit weird, that's a bit sneaky and unusual, but that's kind of why you can see the graph tells you this. Um, it shows you, oh there's an asymptote there, you're not allowed to go there, so don't include it in your solution.